An alien in the form of a beautiful girl offers men some fun, but a cruel fate awaits the men in her lair. The film begins with a completely expressionless girl named Laura stripping another girl of all her clothes. She lies motionless and makes no attempt to resist. Whether she is alive or not is a mystery. The undressed, motionless girl evokes no sympathy from Laura. With a blank face and without showing any squeamishness, she puts on the unfortunate woman's clothes, even her underwear. Laura then looks at the motionless girl. A tear flows from her eye. But Laura is not moved by this, far more interested in the ant on the girl's stomach. Apparently, Laura has not seen such creatures before. Why does the girl behave so strangely? Could it be that she is not really human? We learn that the motionless girl was picked up by a biker on the side of the road in the mountains of Scotland. It's as if he knew exactly where the girl was lying and didn't even try to help her. The biker, with cold indifference, carried the girl out of the roadside bushes and loaded her into a nearby van. He was the one who brought the girl to Laura. After changing clothes, Laura leaves the girl lying on the floor in a strange room with no walls and leaves the house in one of the city's depressing suburbs. In the yard, the motorcyclist retrieves his bike from the trunk of the minivan, leaving the car to her partner. They are both silent, as if they are acting according to a strictly defined plan that does not need to be discussed. Laura confidently gets behind the wheel and heads downtown. In a crowded mall, the girl purposefully visits a clothing and cosmetic store. Nearby, in a beauty salon, women are getting their makeup done. It is as if Laura reads the women's behavior and tries to look like them. After buying a fur coat, Laura returns to her car and paints her lips with provocative red lipstick. She drives slowly through town behind the wheel of the van and looks carefully at the men who pass by. A crowd of soccer fans passing by is of little interest to Laura. Who is she looking for? She doesn't seem to be the usual girl of easy virtue. Rather, she's looking for a lonely victim who obviously no one will be looking for. Finally, the girl stops her car next to a lonely guy and asks him friendly for directions. For the first time, she smiles and even flirts. It's as if Laura is trying to lure the guy into the cabin of her car. In the course of the conversation, it turns out that the man is waiting for his friends around the corner. Then Laura immediately loses interest in him and the smile drops from her face. Uh, All right, thank you. The girl continues on her way. It is evening, but she still has not found a suitable candidate. When she sees another man, Laura opens the window and starts a friendly conversation with him. It turns out that this guy is in no hurry to go anywhere, lives and works alone, and no one is waiting for him. This is just what Laura needs. She immediately offers the man a lift. He readily agrees and climbs into the car. On the way Laura gets to know him and asks him seemingly unobtrusive questions about his life. But he suddenly begins to look at her anxiously and insists that she drive him home. After dropping off her traveling companion, the girl drives on with a poker face. After picking up a new single guy, Laura changes her tactics. She immediately begins to compliment and flirt with him. The guy happily reciprocates. You think I'm pretty? I like the gorgeous. Yeah. I definitely. Laura senses that the guy doesn't mind having fun with her, so she invites him over. The guy has no idea yet what trouble awaits him. Arriving at a certain abandoned house and going inside, they find themselves in a very strange place consisting of a solid black mirror. The girl beckons the man to follow her and excitably undresses him as she walks in. The stupefied victim does not notice the weirdness of the place. The guy also undresses, but gradually begins to sink into a murky liquid substance. He is not even fully aware of what is happening. Laura walks forward indifferently, without turning around. The man sinks completely into the black mirror, without uttering a sound. The mirror then regains its solid form, and the girl coldly puts on her clothes and sets out again on a search. Laura doesn't seem to need sleep or rest, she's just a machine for luring lonely guys into a dark trap. But what happened to her first victim and how does the black mirror work? That will become clear later. In the meantime, Laura drives through the city, staring indifferently ahead. In the morning, the girl finds herself on the seashore, where she waits for a lonely swimmer. Laura does not take her eyes off him, so the guy is compelled to approach her to get acquainted. During the conversation, it turns out that the guy is an ordinary tourist from the Czech Republic. He admits that he is traveling alone and has decided to stay in Scotland, as it is the perfect place to escape to. Suddenly their conversation is interrupted by the scream of a man who is trying to rescue his drowning wife from the sea. There is a rather violent storm in the sea, and there are many dangerous rocks all around. The Czech tourist feels that he can help the unhappy couple and rushes to them into the sea. He manages to save the man with difficulty, but his wife can no longer be helped. She disappears under the water. The rescued man pushes the Czech away and, desperately sacrificing himself, rushes out again to find his wife. He can no longer return to shore. 
Laura quietly observes her new acquaintance and his unsuccessful attempt to save the drowning couple. The exhausted tourist is carried to the shore, where he tries to catch his breath and almost faints. Laura approaches the brave guy, finds a larger rock, and skillfully knocks him out with a blow to the head. Dragging him along the beach, she notices a little crying baby whose parents have just been caught up in the waves. Now there is no one to take care of him, but this does not arouse any feelings in Laura. She puts the Czech tourist in her car and heads for the abandoned house. As darkness falls, Laura's biker partner shows up on the beach. He collects all of the Czech tourist's personal belongings so that no one will think to look for him. He mercilessly leaves the poor crying child on the beach in spite of the approaching night and the raging sea. Having dealt with the brave Czech tourist, Laura looks for her next target. She follows a lonely guy through a deserted parking lot and suddenly bumps into a crowd of drunken girls. The cheerful girls drag her along into a nightclub. The bright lights and loud club music are clearly not to Laura's liking, because she doesn't know how to express emotion. She tries to leave the club in a hurry. On the way to the exit, she is approached by a fast-talking guy, who says he has been watching her for a long time. The suitor also informs her that he is single and doesn't mind having a good time. You alone here? Oh, yeah, I'm all alone, I? Laura then eagerly agrees to hang out and returns to the dance floor with the guy. They continue getting to know each other in a more private setting. Afterwards, the guy also doesn't notice as he falls into the grip of the black mirror himself. The girl slowly undresses and, like a black widow, lures the unsuspecting male into her trap. Like the others, the guy follows her and slowly immerses himself in the liquid. As he does so, he stares spellbound at Laura, as if under hypnosis, until the final moment. Once submerged in the depths of the mirror, the man finds himself in a state of weightlessness. Helplessly and incomprehensibly, he looks at Laura as she walks away. Then the man notices one of the other victims, who seems to still be alive, but his body has already softened enough and as if prepped for something. The guys extend their arms toward each other, looking for support. Suddenly all of the man's insides are abruptly sucked out of his body, and all that's left is a scrap of skin dangling in weightlessness. The guy who is left is in shock at what he has seen, and the same fate probably awaits him. It turns out that it was lust that led these guys into a trap. They have sunk into this black mass of passion, and all that is left of them is a human shell. Afterwards we see a creeping conveyor belt, as if in a terrifying meat factory. It transports the red liquid toward the grim unknown. The substance appears to be processed into the energy needed by the mysterious villains. But that's not certain. I wonder what they do with the remaining skin? Meanwhile, Laura goes hunting again. Standing in a traffic jam, the girl receives a rose as a gift from some bored man. Laura hardly understands the meaning of this gesture. She is more attracted to the scarlet liquid from the vendor's hand left on the flower. Laura watches the salesman bandage the injured hand, and she develops an interest in people for the first time. Still sitting in the car, the girl listens to the radio. The presenter is talking about a recent incident on the seashore where a family was lost during a storm. Rescuers a few days later were only able to find the man's body. It turned out to be a 36-year-old chemistry professor from Edinburgh University. His 32-year-old wife and young child were also with him, but were reported missing because the search was suspended due to the fog. Laura clearly understands who they are talking about, but her face does not express an ounce of sympathy. Will the girl, in time, be able to realize the value of human life? So far, it doesn't seem so, because in a moment she lures the next victim to her. A man is showering her with compliments. You just look amazing. The guy has a point, but his unfortunate fate is already assured. Laura leads him to that very abandoned house, where the familiar procedure is repeated. After that, Laura meets up with the biker. He is either the girl's partner or her boss. Either way, the man scrutinizes Laura from all sides, as if he suspects her of something. He looks particularly closely into Laura's eyes. They do not express anything. This pleases the biker and he walks away. Soon enough, the girl is walking down a crowded street, but suddenly stumbles and falls over. She feels something resembling pain and stays down. People politely help Laura up. At this moment, something human inside the girl is awakened. Laura then begins to observe people from a new perspective, perhaps gaining some kind of empathy. Laura begins to perceive herself as a part of the human world. Having let her guard down a little, she immediately runs into a gang of aggressive teenagers. The boys try to break into her car. Fearful of their behavior, the girl starts the van and drives away out of harm's way. Laura drives on through town and meets her new victim. She finds a deeply unhappy man suffering from a rare disease. The guy has a very peculiar appearance, he only allows himself to leave the house at night and only to go shopping. He has no relationship with the opposite sex. After luring the poor guy into the cabin, Laura learns that he has no friends, has never had a girlfriend and generally tries to avoid people. Laura boosts the poor guy's self-esteem with compliments and lets him touch himself. How's that? Cool. So the girl easily captures his sensitive heart and lures him into her lair. 
In the process, the guy can't believe his eyes and keeps repeating that this is a dream. Laura performs the standard procedure and immerses the man in the liquid. Then she gets dressed and is about to leave the bizarre house, but suddenly stops in front of the mirror and takes a long look at her face. It seems that she is overcome by a sudden guilty conscience, as she unexpectedly decides to take pity on the man. Laura somehow frees the poor guy from captivity and, much to his surprise, lets him out alive. The stunned lad walks naked through the fields, trying to find his way home. At the same time, the same familiar biker races down the highway. Somehow he discovers his underling's emotional transgression and arrives at the guy's house. Here, the biker quickly eliminates him as a potentially dangerous witness by knocking him out and stuffing him in the trunk of a car. Along the way, the biker notices that the old woman next door is watching him. Perhaps the same fate awaits her. Laura senses the danger. So she quickly gets behind the wheel of her van and decides to drive away from the city. Abandoning her car in the middle of the road, the girl proceeds on foot and gets lost amidst the foggy mountainous terrain. This morning fog conveys her state of uncertainty. Laura has broken the system and now has no idea what to do next, but soon the girl does reach a small town in the mountains. She walks into a sweet tourist coffee shop with large panoramic windows. Laura wants to try something special that ordinary people enjoy, so she orders herself a piece of delicious cake. But when she tries it, she immediately spits it out. The customers squint at her in bewilderment. It turns out that human food is not for her. Laura leaves the cafe and continues to walk along the road. When she passes a bus stop, a polite man advises her to wait, as a bus will be arriving in a minute. Laura doesn't know where to go, but for some reason she listens to the man and waits for the bus. The polite man asks if the girl needs help. After some thought, she answers that she does. The guy heads off with his new friend to the supermarket. Here he buys everything he needs and takes the girl to his house. Attentively caring for his guest, he gives her a whole new experience. Laura watches a comedy show on television with interest, moves her fingers to the beat of the music playing on the radio, and watches as her host paces in the kitchen. She doesn't touch the food this time, probably remembering that awful cake from the cafe. Afterwards, the lonely bachelor carefully sets Laura up in a separate room, brings her a cup of tea, turns on the heater, and leaves her to rest. Left to herself, the girl strips naked and scrutinizes her human body in front of the mirror. She didn't have that opportunity before, as she had to bluntly lure men and not ask unnecessary questions. Meanwhile, the biker and a few others like him are organizing an emergency meeting and are already scurrying around the neighborhood looking for the missing girl. And Laura, apparently, doesn't mind socializing and living a quiet human life for a while. She decides to stay with the polite guy for a while. He gives the girl plenty of attention, shows her the local sights and, like a true gentleman, romantically cares for her and carries her through puddles so she doesn't get wet. While walking through an ancient castle, it turns out that Laura is afraid of heights. Then the man gently supports her and helps her down the steep stairs. It is the first time the girl has had such an experience and she looks at the man as if he were her savior. And the man gives her gentle encouragement. Okay. You did that. Warm feelings develop between Laura and the man. When they return home, they try to have a nice, gentle privacy. It seems this time the Black Widow is all about love, and the man is in no danger. After a touching foreplay, the man intends to get down to business, but suddenly Laura jumps up, grabs a lamp and studies her genitals in amazement. The guy is hugely perplexed, but does not distract her. Apparently Laura had no idea about these features of her body. After all, in the process of seducing a lot of men, the girl never once got to the most interesting part. Without saying a word, the girl leaves the dumbfounded bloke and goes far into the woods. She probably has a lot to think about alone. Laura wanders among the beautiful rainy thickets and bumps into a local lumberjack. He tries to communicate with her awkwardly, asks if she is alone, and advises her to be careful, because the area is wet and slippery. The girl thanks the suspicious man and continues on her way. In the meantime, the bikers actively patrol the roads and keep looking for her. Soon the girl emerges from the thicket and finds a tourist lodge. Here she can wait out the rain and get some rest. She looks around, lies down on the floor, and is about to take a nap with the peaceful sound of trees and wind. But at that moment the horny lumberjack appears and tries to do something to Laura against her will. Quickly awakened, the girl breaks free and runs away from the woodcutter into the woods. She tries to hide among the bushes, but changes her mind and runs out onto a forest road. There she discovers a huge logging truck, opens its cabin, but can't find the keys. Laura experiences real human fear, just like her victims in the black mirror, and the lustful lumberjack appears on the horizon. The confused girl honks her horn several times, hoping that someone will hear her and come to her aid. But there is not a soul around. Laura then jumps out of the truck and continues running into the woods. With great difficulty, the woodcutter catches up with her, throws her to the ground and begins to tear her clothes off. The girl tries to resist, but almost gives up. 
Suddenly, in the course of the struggle, the skin on her back cracks, and traces of black fluid can be seen on the hands of the bewildered man. The shocked lumberjack runs away from her as if she were an unholy spirit. And Laura removes the remnants of her skin, exposing her black silhouette. This is exactly what her true self looks like. Having stripped off her entire shell, the humanoid creature examines her former face. It is as if Laura the alien is looking at Laura the human and trying to understand herself. It is as if everything else no longer matters to her. Suddenly the woodcutter returns, douses her with gasoline and sets her on fire. The burning creature doesn't ask for help or make a sound at all. It simply runs out into a snow-covered clearing, falls down, and gradually burns to ashes. Smoke rises into the sky, as the snow slowly descends. Meanwhile, standing on the mountain, the motorcyclist keeps looking at his fallen underling. Do you think the heroine could live like an ordinary human? And why do aliens need a man's inner world? Let's discuss it in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.